The NYPD says the teen known as Junior had dreams of becoming a police officer. Right now at 11, a 15-year-old dragged out of the bodega and stabbed to death may have been the victim of mistaken identity. Tonight, that boy's family says a gang member has apologized to them for killing the wrong person. Police say they are still searching for the five attackers. Searching to find yourselves in who you are. Police have arrested the five suspects accused in the murder of this teenager in the Bronx. Judge Robert Neary essentially told the five killers that they'd thrown their lives away for the Trinitarios. A Bronx jury handed down two guilty verdicts Friday, stemming from the 2018 murder of 15-year-old Junior Guzman Felice. Searching to find yourselves in who you are. As the summer of 2018 approached, a war was brewing between rival factions of the Trinitarios gang and the Bronx borough of New York City. The feud resulted in at least two shootings and eight stabbings between June 5th and June 19th. In one incident, on June 18th, a member of the set known as Los Sures was shot in the face by someone from the rival Sunset crew. On the evening of June 20th, several comrades from Los Sures met at the home of the shot caller of the crew, Diego Suero also known as Psycho. He was also sometimes referred to by the moniker Santa Claus for unknown reasons. He gave the goons instructions that night to ride on Sunset Territory to find and hit opponents. Four men jumped into four vehicles and drove toward East 183rd Street and Adams Place where members of the Sunset faction were known to hang out. At about 11.40 that night, as the convoy rode along, they caught sight of a 15-year-old boy who was walking alone looking at the screen of his smartphone. The boy's name was Leandro Guzman Feliz, affectionately known as Junior to his friends and family. Some of the men rolled down car windows and called out to the teenager. He looked up, confused and unaware of who the men were. Several of the men hopped out and approached the boy. There was an exchange of words. Junior told the men that he wasn't from Sunset. The men continued to press him with questions. One of them made a gesture as if he was going to hit the kid. Junior turned and ran. The men hopped back into their vehicles and gave chase. Junior begins to run, and the cars give chase. The cars then split up and appear to surround him. It's 11.37. Junior dipped into this corner store and attempted to hide behind the counter before several of his pursuers entered and spotted him. As Junior cowered behind the owner of the store, one of the gangsters quickly concocted a story and told the proprietor that Junior had attacked his grandmother. Junior pleaded with the men, saying he was not the person they were looking for. The store owner told them to take the fight outside and unlocked a door leading to the area behind the counter. One of the hoodlums moved in and grabbed Junior. He assaulted the boy there on the floor of the bodega. Then he and another dragged the terrified teenager outside as he frantically tried to escape their grasp. Outside, the boy was swarmed by five assailants who were armed with knives and one with a machete. Several others stood nearby keeping watch. The group proceeded to stab the young man repeatedly and to hack at him with a machete. They stabbed Junior numerous times, then fled back to their vehicles. The last assailant grabbed Junior from behind and dragged his knife across the boy's throat. The attack lasted approximately 20 seconds. Junior re-entered the bodega, mortally wounded and spilling blood on the floor. The proprietor ordered the boy out of the store, apparently directing him to take a walk over to St. Barnabas Hospital, about a block away. Surveillance footage shows the teenager stepping out onto the sidewalk again. Then he attempts to jog over to the hospital. He collapsed just as he reached the entrance. Cell phone camera footage captures Good Samaritans attempting to assist the dying teen, but his jugular vein had been severed and he bled to death as a result of that wound. Immediately following the attack, Frederick Thin, who had supervised the stabbing from a short distance, made a call to Diego Suero and advised him that the mission was complete. Then the crew went back to Suero's apartment to hide the murder weapons. Suero and his hit team then gathered around and examined a photo of 20 to 30 rival gang members to try and identify which opponent they'd executed that night. They were unable to find the boy in the photo. It began to occur to the men that they had missed their target. News of Junior's killing sparked outrage across the city, especially after video of the grisly slaughter was released and went viral. The hashtag Justice for Junior also exploded on the internet and the story gained national attention as the shocking brutality of the crime was captured on camera. 
Also, Junior was not only an innocent victim, but was reportedly the definition of a good kid who aspired to be a police detective and participated in an NYPD program for aspiring cops. On Saturday, June 23rd, three days after the killing, it was reported that a leader in the Trinitarios gang had reached out to Junior's family via the social media app Snapchat and said in a two-minute video that Junior had not been the intended target of the attack. He gave an apology and said that Junior's assailants had been kicked out of the gang. On Sunday, June 24th, it was reported that five of the suspects in Junior's murder had been taken into custody. Three were located in Patterson, New Jersey. One had fled to the Dominican Republic before returning to New York and turning himself in. The first suspect arrested was this man, Kevin Alvarez, who had arranged his surrender through a lawyer. Alvarez, who was 19 years old at the time, would eventually enter an agreement in which he would plead guilty to manslaughter, cooperate with the state, and testify against his cohorts in exchange for a greatly reduced sentence. In the following weeks and months, nine more individuals would be named as suspects in Junior's murder and arrested for the crime. Of these, five went to trial in May of 2018. Joneki Martinez Estrella, who was 24 years old at the time, Antonio Rodriguez Hernandez Santiago, who was also 24, 21-year-old Jose Muniz, Manuel Rivera, who was 18, and 23-year-old Elvin Garcia. The men can be seen in the video of Junior's killing, swarming the boy and attacking him with knives and a machete. The five defendants were each charged with gang assault, murder, and other offenses. Among the witnesses who testified during the proceedings was this man, Kevin Alvarez, previously mentioned, who was an accomplice in the crime. He's seen in the video assaulting Junior and dragging him out of the store just before his collaborators descend upon the helpless teenager. When he spoke to the jury, he admitted that if he testified truthfully in that trial and in any subsequent trials, he would likely be sentenced to time served for his role in the incident and would be released from jail. The revelation drew gasps from the spectators in the courtroom. Alvarez told the jury that he was not a full-fledged member of the Trinitarios on the night of Junior's death. He was a probationary associate, earning his stripes, which was accomplished by completing missions on behalf of the gang, particularly committing acts of violence. He said he joined at the urging of a friend of his, who said to him that doing so would give him a sense of belonging. He testified that on the fateful day, he was with the crew and went to Diego Suero's home and was there when the leader gave the order to head over to Sunset's stronghold to hunt for rivals. Their orders were to kill or maim opponents on sight. He told the court that Junior was surprised and afraid when the gang approached him. He described the gang chasing Junior for blocks in their vehicles and on foot. Alvarez broke down in tears and turned away from the five defendants who were seated right in front of him as he recounted the horrifying confrontation inside the store. He admitted to beating Junior and said that he and another man were the ones who dragged the boy out of the store. He did not stab Junior, he said. He said he wasn't aware that his cohorts were armed until he brought Junior out onto the sidewalk. Alvarez disappears from the infamous footage as the slaughter begins. Alvarez told the jury that shortly after the attack, he and the rest of the crew were at Suero's apartment and that he knew that they had attacked the wrong person when they all examined a group photo of the rival gang, which did not include Junior. He immediately felt regret, he said. He testified that he would be labeled a snitch because of his testimony and that he fears for his life now. He said that he would be marked for death for the rest of his life. A second man who participated in the hunt for Junior and his subsequent slaying, Michael Sosa Reyes, also made a plea agreement with prosecutors and testified during the trial. Reyes is seen in the killing video negotiating with the owner of the bodega as Junior hides behind the counter. Reyes leaves the store before Junior is dragged out and doesn't appear in the video of the slashing. Under Reyes' plea deal, he was not charged with the crime and spent no time in jail. During Reyes' testimony, he described the war between Los Sures and Sunset during the summer of 2018. He told the court that at about 10.30 p.m. on the night in question, Frederick Thin, second in command of the crew, also known as Colita, told the men that they were headed to the Little Italy section of the Bronx to search for their rivals. An order had come from Mr. Suero, he said. Go after sunset. You already know what you have to do. Reyes said he understood that to be an order to do any kind of damage. If you have a gun, you shoot, he said. If you have a knife, you stab. If you have a machete, use a machete. The prosecutor's case was based heavily on Reyes and Alvarez's testimony, along with the video evidence. The defense questioned the credibility of Reyes and Alvarez, scrutinizing the character of the two witnesses. It cited proven lies Alvarez had told authorities during the investigation and questioned the motivations of the two men for testifying, given the fact that they had received such lenient plea deals. 
Jonaki Martinez Australia is the man seen in the surveillance footage of the incident, dispensing the final fatal knife strike which cut Junior's jugular. The medical examiner who performed Junior's autopsy testified that that knife wound was what killed the boy and that all of his other injuries were minor. Lawyers for the other defendants argued that their client's charges were excessive as the young men had no intention of killing Junior. They argued that one man, Martinez Estrella, had killed Junior, not their clients. On Friday, June 14, 2019, nearly a year after Junior's murder, after two days of deliberation, a jury of 11 women and one man convicted Jonaki Martinez Estrella, Antonio Rodriguez Hernandez Santiago, Jose Muniz, Manuel Rivera, and Elvin Garcia of the murder of Lissandro Guzman Feliz. After the verdict was announced, Muniz turned to smirk at the court and shouted, Popote hasta la muerte, which means in English, Trinitarios until death. Five months later, Muniz and Estrella threw up gang signs during their sentencing hearing as courtroom cameras snapped pictures of them. Martinez, who stabbed Junior in the neck, will do life without parole. He spoke during the hearing and apologized to Junior's family for what he had done. He said that he'd been under the influence of alcohol and drugs and didn't know what he was doing. He said he hadn't intended to kill Junior. Muniz likewise apologized and said his intention was not to cause Junior's death. He said that he cries over the tragic event and that he prays for Junior's family. He was sentenced to life with parole eligibility after 25 years, along with Antonio Rodriguez Hernandez Santiago and Elvin Garcia. Manuel Rivera was sentenced to 23 years to life. In June of 2022, the ringleaders, Diego Suero and his lieutenant, Frederick Thin, went on trial for their roles in Junior's killing. The two were 29 and 20 years old, respectively, on the night in question. Suero was accused of giving the order. Thin, who rode in the convoy that chased and cornered the team, was accused of supervising the mission. Prosecutors said that Thin reported back to Suero immediately after the deed was done. Alvarez and Reyes again testified for the prosecution. The defense again attacked the credibility of the two witnesses. As the proceedings were underway, district attorneys claimed that they were harassed by unidentified individuals on multiple occasions outside the courtroom, presumably in an effort to influence the trial. There were reported attempts to intimidate Alvarez as well. The defense said that Suero and Thin had given no order to kill and only wanted rivals to be roughed up. It said that an overzealous foot soldier who had gone too far was responsible for Junior's death. The trial lasted about a month and ended with the conviction of Suero and Thin last month on July 29, 2022. The two men are scheduled to be sentenced on September 16th. Each faces 25 years to life in prison. The store where Junior sought refuge just prior to his slaying was closed for months following the tragedy, and the corner where it is located became a massive memorial to the teen. Junior was widely eulogized and iconized in the days and weeks following his murder, particularly in the Bronx where he lived. Hundreds of people attended his funeral. Murals were painted throughout the neighborhood, which showed Junior among the clouds, Junior wearing angel wings, Junior wearing the baseball jersey of the New York Yankees, his beloved hometown team. The NYPD responded to the outrage in the community and to a deluge of tips by cracking down on gang affiliates. The New York City Police Foundation established a scholarship it named for Junior, and in July of 2019, a summer camp was opened and was also named in Junior's honor. The camp would provide programs for children from the Bronx. The street where Junior was killed was renamed Lissandro Junior Way in February of 2019. An additional six men are awaiting trial for having participated in Junior's slaying to one degree or another. One of them, Danilo Payamps Pacheco, is the only one of the defendants that has been granted bail. He was 21 years old on the night in question and claims that he is not and never was a member of the Trinitarios. Pacheco's family has said that on the night in question, he was being driven by his friend, Michael Sosa Reyes, and thought that they were about to go to a park to hang out when Reyes joined the convoy of cars and began chasing Junior. His attorney has said that Pacheco was not armed, that he did not chase Junior, and that he did not participate in the boy's killing. Due to security concerns, Kevin Alvarez is being held at an undisclosed facility outside the Bronx jurisdiction. Michael Sosa Reyes remains free. Their plea deals require them to testify in the trials of the remaining defendants. 
Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting. Thanks for helping me to grow this channel. I got some interesting stories I want to share with you guys. Dropping soon. Stay tuned. Peace.